Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and we have the overnight GFS run. And let me just start off by saying I'm less concerned with what the GFS actually prints out in terms of, you know, the exact spots of the lows and the highs and so on. I was, I'm more looking for that the model continues the trend that it started a one run ago, which was to start to look like the day run European, which was, which was very dynamic. And uh, indeed, that is the case. Now, let me just point out a couple of things. First off, uh, this is for Thursday night, Friday morning. There's a, another wave that forms on the front that goes by here tomorrow evening. And <clears throat> it actually produces a period of precip that brings it close to the coast. I haven't actually looked at the NAM yet. I'm going to go back to that a little later. Uh, but in the meantime, when you look at this run, a couple of things stand out to me. One is there are two main features here. You have the one that's running well out ahead in the southern stream that's producing this low off North Carolina over the weekend. That low has to go out, okay, because there's only so much room in the atmosphere for something to happen. You can't have two major storms back to back. Uh, it, it's just extremely rare. Uh, I, I can't really recall seeing I think maybe back in 2010 or 2011, one of those years, there was an instance where we had two deep lows very, very close to each other. This one has to go out. And one of the things that I noticed is that it's not as deep as the prior runs and it's faster. So that is is, is a positive if you're looking for uh, something on the order of a winter storm. And when you look at the second system here and you can see it. As it, I'll just back it up a little bit. You can see that low there that comes down in that northern stream. And now it's starting to reflect the upper feature. It's going to redevelop right along the coast and then intensify as it moves to Cape Cod, gets pretty deep. And this is now for Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. It's in the Gulf of Maine. And the uh, precipitation is just about over. And we have very cold air that's pouring down uh, into the Great Lakes. Now, I'm. I'm liking this look in terms of how it looks compared to the European because it's actually pretty close now. And when we look at the upper air, uh, it matches up fairly well. Uh, you have, there's that lead system that goes out. Now here's that next trough that's digging down. And this is what forms this strong upper air system that dives down into Ohio. That's what intensifies the coastal storm. And let me just back it up here. I'm going to try and pull up the European. It's hard to do the same hour comparisons. I can't go to the, this run. I have to go to the run before. So let's see how it matches up. And we'll just switch to the European. And it matches up pretty well. Uh, this was the European from uh, this afternoon. It's actually about, uh, there's about a, uh, there's a 12 hour time difference here. This is for Tuesday morning on the European. Whereas the GFS that I just looked at, this is the old, uh, the new GFS. So it's got the upper feature. It's just as deep. Uh, you can see how it's getting ready to dive down um, into position here. And there we have it uh, down in southern Indiana. So this really kind of looks like what the day run looked. So I'm going to be curious now, even more curious, to see what the European does. But I, I think it, it highlights the fact that we do have a threat here for uh, probably uh, later Monday night into Tuesday night for that second system to develop here off the Carolinas and then head up toward Cape Cod. Now, when you look at the surface, because this is another thing that's going on that's very important, and I'm going to go a little closer up so you can you can take a look here, and you're going to say, okay, well, Joe, where's the cold air going to come from? Well, the first thing is that that first low actually draws down some cold air. Um, what it does is if you look up up in here, this is high pressure that's building from Quebec, and it doesn't really move. So it's draining cold air down the eastern seaboard, okay, and it just sits up there. So as long as that high sits up in that position, uh, you're going to have cold air draining southward. Uh, probably further south than what the model sh uh, likes to show. Oftentimes, the cold air is much more important than what the model indicates. So uh, now this is again for Tuesday afternoon. And by the way, as we move along, that cold air mass, you know, comes in. Then we have another 
a strong clipper that drives down into the Great Lakes for the President's Day weekend. This is brutally cold air that comes in in the Northeast uh, for that weekend. Um, so we're talking single digits and, and teens here, uh, especially if there's any kind of snow cover across the Great Lakes and much of the Northeast. So this is going to be our one really big shot probably of true Arctic air for the winter, the way it's looking um, beyond this. Now, what happens beyond this is that the uh, upper air structure begins to modify a little bit, and we actually uh, see the uh, cold flow relax. I'm going to take a look and see if the upper air is in for, for the wide shot so we can take a look at the overall jet stream pattern. And then we'll go look at the NAM to see what it does for um, – now, it's only out to 300 hours, but actually we can get to see at least what's happening. Um, from this view okay so here's here's our system that's coming through now okay so that goes by and you can see here's a trough that approaches for Friday that generates that second wave and you have the be that southern system here another system coming up in the northern stream and right there is what's dry, diving southward to make the um, second system for early next week and you can see how dynamic it gets you know all sorts, all, all up here, all this warming that's going on through the Arctic has just completely displaced all the energy southward. And eventually, as we go through uh, next week and into next weekend, the vortex forms over Hudson's Bay and it comes right overhead. So this is that cold air. And then it pulls out because we're going to undergo another ch change. And again, this I think it's just part of the same volatility that we've been seeing you know, cold air masses that come in doesn't get stay cold for that long. It's not prolonged. There's a lot of chaos in the atmosphere. So I'm thinking what may probably may happen. This is just a guess that when we go into perhaps the third week of February, we're going to see temperatures modify a bit as this pattern realigns again, and then perhaps fires up for the end of February and the first part of March. So um, I don't know. I find this whole thing really. Um, very interesting. This has been an incredibly unusual winter from a lot of respects, so different from from other winters in the past where you just kind of lock into the same pattern for the long, you know, for five, six weeks at a time. Um, this volatility is frustrating sometimes, but it also can be a lot of fun because you get to see um, a lot of things happen and you get long breaks in between as you try to figure out what the next adventure is going to be. All right, there's our rain for Thursday, and you can see that the uh, NAM does bring in precip. It actually makes it cold enough. I was looking at some of the temperatures aloft, and it does change it over to snow over Long Island uh, for um, Thursday night into Friday morning before the wave pulls out. If that happens, it'll be just a cheap thrill anyway. And then it doesn't go out far enough so that we can see what's going to be happening over the weekend. So that's what we have. Um, I will be curious, as I said, to see what the European does, and we will um, see how it matches up. Uh, the GFS seems to be going the way of the European, the way it was on the day run, so tonight's run ought to be pretty interesting. And I guess just to make you snow lovers feel a little better, I will show you the GFS snow map um, for this event because it does generate um, some accumulating snow uh, for this event for Tuesday and you'll see it there there it goes so it's got us you know it has much of New Jersey Long Island southeastern New England in a pretty good band of as little as four to maybe as much as 10 inches how real that is I don't know it's a long way to go to 200 to uh, the uh, end time of this event which would be Wednesday morning but it does produce uh, a fair amount of snow. Not everything is going to wind up being a blizzard, uh, but we're going to continue to watch this carefully. This is, of course, an early estimate based on what the GFM literally printed out and not what it may necessarily wind up being. So still a long way to go and a lot to uh, watch. And tomorrow, don't forget, flash flood, uh, we have, I'm sorry, flood watches up for central New Jersey, south of 78, north of Route 195. Looks like we'll get a solid you know, inch to two inches of rain. So there probably will be some localized flooding to deal with. So uh, if you get a chance tomorrow morning, if you haven't cleared any storm drains that are around your house, uh, you might want to do that just to help uh, the water flow along. 
and we will, of course, update this you update this for you during the morning when uh, we get a good night's sleep and see what the European has to say.